<laughs> Welcome everybody, my name is Michael or Kubera. Previously I made a video about this, I believe, on Avi. Last time I made a video about this, I was telling you guys how I lost, I think it was approximately $2,500 to an individual. And as you can see, Polizia Police, what can you assume? Even if you can't read the text in Polish, what can you assume? Let's try to translate this to English um, just just once so you guys can see. He rented luxury cars and did not refund his customer deposits, when they, uh, safety deposits, when they drove too fast. That's right. Patrick Wajkowski, the individual who is behind the scam, has been arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Two years later, that's right. And actually, one of my comments from Facebook, from one of the Facebook pages, is here. Uh, where, oh my goodness, the translation. Hold up, let's see. Let's go back to Polish. There we go. There we go. There's my comments. Straciłem 8,5 tysięcy złotych za prędkości, tak samo jak inni tutaj. Maserati Quattroporte chce iść do sądu, bo adwokat już przegląda się tej sprawie. Unfortunately, what that last sentence means is my... Uh, lawyer is going through this. I did go to a lawyer, but uh, at at a certain point, I just gave up because it costs two thousand and uh, two thousand PLN in addition to the eight and a half thousand PLN that I lost, and transportation costs to get to the lawyer because I, I lived far away from the lawyer. It, it, you know, it's not a lot, but all these costs add up, and we were only halfway through. And the case didn't even start yet. And I saw other people, over 100 people lost a fair amount of money. Anywhere from 5,000 to even up to 15,000 PLN. Turns out we are currently on library.tv. It was actually on my Avi channel. And there's the video originally, how to avoid losing $2,800 like I did. And last year I produced a video discussing of how I lost 8,500 PLN, which at current prices is two. Two thousand two hundred seventy nine dollars and fifty eight cents but two years ago it was worth a lot more plus an additional two thousand or even more I can't remember the full amount which is around five hundred thirty six dollars and thirty seven cents for two thousand maybe even all the way up to three thousand dollars because of additional lawyer fees and whatever other smaller costs that were included I was so silly to even fill up and lose approximately two hundred to three hundred let's just say two hundred fifty sixty seven seventy dollars to fill up the gas tank for this sports rental car, even though I know the owner of this place was treating them badly. So I lost to a thief who also stole from over 100 individuals. And today we found out, well actually yesterday, that he has been arrested. He is going to serve jail time. That's good. The prosecution's hot on his mm, tootie. I'm happy as all heck about this. So there's a lot of people who may not understand, and let me just summarize it for you. Back in 2019, it was the worst year of my life, and hopefully in the future I'm able to make a pretty cool video saying, oh yeah, I got my money, everything was successful, the guy's rotting in jail, I'm now having a successful career, my tinnitus has been cured, whatever, <laughs> in the future. But right now I am still recovering because I will continue to be recovering and always be a little bit anxious in my brain brain's constantly in fight or flight mode because of tinnitus, because of hearing loss. I got hearing aids, it cost me a bunch of money, and 2019 was a terrible year where it, a lot of people with PTSD after war, they describe how the worst part is that you just want to return back to your old life. If there was just a way that you could just go back and everything's normal and, and you are able to experience that. It's not so much what you've seen, what changed you. That is also a part of it, but unconsciously every single day you wake up, you're like, God, I just wish I could go back, right? And I don't have PTSD because, you know, I'm not coming back from war or whatever, but I do have a lot of stress and anxiety and I fell into a deep, dark depression because of tinnitus. And I can relate to people who do have PTSD because after I read that, I said, whoa, that's that's essentially what my life is on a daily basis. I'm constantly reminiscing about the past. I'm trying to get behind it, but it is a very difficult process. And I've always been a car guy. I've, I've always wanted to drive a fast car. That was a big dream of mine. And I rented out a lot of cars in my lifetime. And there was the car sharing programs in Poland where you're able to rent out BMW i3s and Jaguar I-Paces and amazing cars, right? 
And recently there's even Bentleys and Porsches for car sharing. It's absolutely fantastic. I love those programs. And you're able to drive around for like an hour and I got a Pontiac Firebird. I was super excited about that stuff. So it cost a little bit of money, but it was, wow, making me super excited and happy that I'm alive, right? So you have to understand the person I was in 2019. I was also pretty depressed because at 19 years old, I made over $100,000 thanks to cryptocurrency in 2017. In 2018, I lost it all. I, I was broke. And that really hurt me because I realized in Poland, $100,000 is a massive amount of money. I could have changed my life forever, right? And I made so many mistakes and that's why I'm making this channel now and constantly making videos and warning people not to do silly mistakes so you're able to learn from me and from others who already have gone through this and hopefully I am able to get onto a better life and you know this this all is years in the past and I'm trying to get behind it and things are improving I'm not as depressed anymore my financial situation is improving my credit score is improving I honestly understand that the money that I lost in this case I'm not getting back because this guy's broke but I do understand that I'm in a better position now, and hopefully I'm never gonna get scammed or stolen like this ever again, or from anything, honestly. And hopefully I'm able to teach other people to avoid this as well. But the reason I'm explaining myself is some people may not understand. So when you're a car guy and when you're super depressed because you can't cure something that you can't change it, you can have no control over this horrendous disease, I mean, a guy with $600 million net worth recently, unfortunately, died because of this. And some people are saying, oh, it's because of COVID. No, I mean, he had severe tinnitus. He donated to tinnitus associations, and he was complaining to his family and to his doctors about this, and eventually he just couldn't take it anymore. And as someone with tinnitus, I, I understand that because I was in that place in 2019. I just didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't know how or what or what was going to happen, but I knew that, listen, if my time is limited here, and in a way it kind of is, everybody's time is limited because you never know when you're going to die. But in 2019, I thought, you know, I'm never going to make it to 2020 or 2021. Who, who cares about the, the little money that I do have left? I thought I would just go out and get a rental car. And this was one of the cheapest companies to get a Maserati for a weekend. It was one of the cheaper cars. You know, there were more expensive like Nissan GTRs and stuff like that. But as a car guy, it, it's always been a dream of mine. In 2017, I knew I had the money for a Maserati. And I was like, oh my God, but let's try and get a Lambo. I got too greedy. And I had this hunger since I had that money, lost that money and never got to experience my dream. I thought, let's just get a rental car just so, you know, I'm able to have some fun. And I had the best time in my life. Here are some pictures. Here's some proof, by the way, uh, that I actually did get it and, and with the guy's name and stuff, the contract or whatever. But there was a different contract, which I don't have pictures of. I'm not going to post it in here. I, I think I posted it in the other video or whatnot. But uh, basically, I, I rented a car, and when I came to give it back, as with all rental cars, you, you have a safety deposit if you break the car, if anything happens to the car. I didn't get the safety deposit back, and a lot of others didn't get the safety deposit back because why? You, you were going over 140 kilometers an hour, but nobody is able to take your safety deposit away. That's like a massive fine unless you're the police or some law-abiding governing body that's able to actually punish you for speeding and honestly 140 kilometers an hour that's legal in a lot of places so if you went 141 just a little bit where no policeman's going to give you a ticket for going on the highway 141 but in this case since you went one kilometer over you're going to lose your money people even who weren't speeding i mean this guy's a trickster this guy was looking for every single way in the book to steal money from people even people who didn't speed he would change the speeds to make it even slower like 120 for some people, 140 for others. Even people who were renting out this car for weddings and stuff, if you added flowers to the car for a wedding, duh, that's what normal people do, he would, bam, take away your safety deposit. So people who even didn't get to rent out the car and have some fun with it lost thousands of dollars. So, you know, I felt like a fool, but I'm happy that this guy's finally getting karma coming his way. And to be quite honest, the whole experience really did change me because ever since then, I, I gotta tell you, I know the Maserati Quattroporte is a terrible car, it's gonna be unreliable and breaking, but in the future, if I'm gonna be in a really sound financial position, I definitely want one, because it was such a fun time, and even if you are the most nihilistic person on the planet, you, you seriously like wanna just die, and you're <laughs> super depressed and upset, but you're a car guy, if you get inside a Maserati Quattroporte with those pipes, 
which isn't the best for tinnitus, but it's soundproofed inside. It's super nice and comfortable and luxurious. Oh man, you're gonna love life. You're gonna love life. I was waking up early just to be able to like look at it, admire it. I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. I was so happy. So, and then the happiness stopped after I lost my money. But <laughs> now if I didn't lose the safety deposit, the whole experience would have cost me a few hundred dollars, which was totally worth it. And that's why a lot of people went because he was one of the cheaper companies and it made sense as a new and up and coming company. If, if you use cheaper cars and you had cheaper prices, you get more customers. And why do I say cheaper cars? Uh, this Maserati was a lemon. It was, it was a lemon title, which means that it's broken and it had a check engine light on. And, you know, there was pictures where like the carbon fiber, there's a little bit, it's, it's broken and there was paint inside. I have no idea what happened to it. Uh, the brakes, they were squealing a little bit. The brakes were good, but something inside was just squeal. I have no idea what was going on. So there was a lot of issues with the car. And the uh, Patrick actually told me he bought it as a salvage title for a lot cheaper from the U.S. And uh, that's when I realized, holy moly, I'm able to get like a Maserati for like twenty, thirty thousand dollars, even a newer one, like a two, 2014, an older one, you can get one for like 10,000. So my dreams can still come true as long as I have a reliable first car and probably a second car. So the third one doesn't break, but uh, let's go into more details. Here we're on the private Facebook group where I was writing comments and a lot of other victims were writing comments. It's just a private group for all the people that, you know, there's a bunch of people who got absolutely screwed out of this. I mean, just this one latest post alone has 28 comments and so far 19 people have uh, actually submitted their information that they've been victims within the past 24 hours. So that's not bad because, you know, this is an old case. People probably forgot about this. To be quite honest, I was getting on the edge of forgetting about it. And uh, let me just translate what they're saying. And this is probably one of the reasons that I actually stopped uh, and didn't end up paying my lawyer for the rest of it because honestly, my lawyer just got free money because she didn't even have to do anything. Uh, you know, I wasn't gonna take a refund or whatever because you know, whatever. Anyways, it was just a bunch of mistakes. Uh, I went to a lawyer and I found out that I think it would cost 4000 to go to court. And what people are saying here is that even if uh, Patrick, the guy who's the uh, scammer, the thief, even if you did win against them in court where a lot of these people did get private lawyers, it depends who won first. And some courts actually ruled in favor of Patrick, which is so silly. Like this guy says, uh, The court and the prosecutor said that they don't see anything wrong in this case. Yeah, so you, you did have it all over the place. It was super chaotic because... Uh, essentially what happened is you got scammed because he didn't read the contract, but the contract was complete BS, right? It was illegal what he did. And some courts would just side with him because, oh, it's a contract. You should have just read the contract, right? But if you sign a contract that says, oh, steal all my money, here's access to all my bank accounts, would that contract actually be valid in court? Maybe, maybe not, but probably not if it had a lot of super illegal stuff within it. So she said that uh, her and her husband won the civil case Unfortunately, there was a lot of people who went before them and uh, they took whatever little money he had. And now uh, the Patrick guy has nothing. But in the article, it also states that Patrick, uh, let's see if we can find it. He was hiding. He changed his identity. Uh, obviously, he changed his phone numbers, where he was living. And he uh, even started growing a beard to try and change the way he looked. He stopped using his normal car and he was using taxis or Ubers so people wouldn't follow him. And uh, I did actually find out where he lived at two addresses during my investigations because a lot of people were trying to figure out like where did this guy live where was he stashing the cars i did actually find the maserati quattro porte in a different area of town it was a pretty sketchy area of town so a lot of me and the victims were, were just searching how can we find this guy because we were trying to build a case on him but ultimately you know it was very very difficult and this sentence says he was even hiding from his own accountant who he was uh, owed money, who the accountant was owed money to for running the company. And this is the sentence plus others from the Facebook group wrote that, you know, they, they can't really recover. This is what I, I already knew. I didn't know about the accountant, but I knew that other people, their stories, how, you know, they were winning cases, but they couldn't get the money. I already knew that Patrick had no money on him. He probably is completely broke. He spent the money. It's just like a Ponzi scheme operator. There's very little chances of me actually getting my money back. 
So that's why I didn't proceed with the court case because it would have cost me more money and it wasn't even guaranteed that I would win first off. And if I did win, it wasn't even guaranteed that I'd get the money back, not even a single cent. And at that time, I lost well over 2000 plus to 8500 and an additional 2000 I mean, you know, this was going into $3,000 territory where, again, the average person in Poland, this is much more than a month's salary. The average person in Poland, uh, I know people who are earning 2000 PLN uh, per month, and this is you know, before taxes, after taxes, you got like 1,500. Obviously, there's some part-time jobs and students and all this stuff, or internships that earn a lot less. Uh, outside of Warsaw, you can earn 2,000 to 3,000. A lot of people earn 3,000 PLN per month. And this is a story where I lost 10,000 in a weekend. So obviously, it hurt. Some people lost 15,000. I didn't want to lose more money, and that's why I just decided not to go to court. It's a pretty embarrassing story for me to tell as I avoid many scams and have avoided many scams throughout my lifetime. But unfortunately, this scam was a little bit more elaborate than your usual one. And um, a lot of very smart people lost their money and a lot of very wealthy people lost their money. And unfortunately, we're not going to get our money back. But uh, karma has come back. Justice has been served, I hope. And hopefully he gets a long sentence. So that's that. Thanks for watching. Don't feel bad for me. Just learn from my mistakes. Uh, the easiest way to solve all this would have been to use a card. I would have just charged back. And some people were able to charge back. But unfortunately, I paid cash this time. And whatever. This is uh, the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> it's getting amazing, bro. That's a stock exhaust, too.